In this video case, we present the successful endoscopic management of a large esophageal defect due to Boerhaave syndrome with endoscopic vacuum therapy using a vacuum sponge and vacuum stent. For the management of upper gastrointestinal defects, endoscopic vacuum therapy is an efficient new treatment option. Since 2018, this has become standard treatment for esophageal leaks in our center using the esosponge. For this treatment, first the sponge is placed over the defect or into the cavity. Second, the sponge is connected to a vacuum pump creating a suction effect on the sponge. This causes closure of the defect, drainage of pus, and a stimulation of perfusion and secondary wound healing. Recently, the Vextent was introduced as new treatment option for these defects. The Vextent consists of a covered nitinol stent with a polyurethane sponge attached to the outside and a suction catheter. After intraluminal placement, the suction catheter is attached to a vacuum pump, creating a negative pressure at the side of the defect. The Vextent combines the benefits of negative pressure therapy via the sponge with sealing of the defect via the stent. The negative pressure additionally keeps the Vextent in place while the esophagus remains open, allowing for oral intake. In this case, we present a 63-year-old male who was admitted with acute chest pain after vomiting. CT scan showed a defect in the distal esophagus. Subsequently, an endoscopy was performed. Endoscopy showed a defect of 4 cm in length, with a cavity extending proximally into the mediastinum filled with debris. After cleaning of the cavity, an attempt was made to place an esosponge into the cavity. However, due to the sharp angle upwards, this was not possible. Therefore, an esosponge was placed in the esophageal lumen covering the defect. During this treatment, the interluminal sponge was exchanged every three to seven days. After clinical improvement with seven sponge exchanges in 37 days, little healing tendency of the defect and cavity was observed during CT imaging and endoscopy, and infectious parameters remained high. Therefore, it was decided to perform surgical decortation and placement of a muscle flap into the cavity. The next video shows this first treatment trajectory. First, a feeding tube is placed. Then, the sponge is placed via the overtube. Subsequently, the sponge is pulled over the defect. Then, vacuum is applied under vision of the endoscope. After one week with the esosponge, the defect looks clean and adequate granulation effect is visible. During the following weeks, the defect looks cleaner and becomes smaller. Due to the stagnant improvement, a muscle flap was placed surgically into the cavity. After surgery, treatment with an intraluminal sponge was continued to stimulate granulation of the esophageal defect. However, after 23 days and two sponge exchanges, infectious parameters increased and CT scan showed expansion of the paraesophageal collection. Furthermore, 
endoscopic improvement was stagnant as the proximal side of the defect remained open. Therefore, we decided to place a vextent. First, a stiff guide wire was placed. The vextent was advanced over the guide wire and introduced into the esophagus. After reintroduction of the endoscope, the vexant was positioned over the defect and deployed. From the second day after placement, oral intake was extended to a soft diet. After seven days, the vexant was removed. The stent was initially loosened using a grasping forceps. Second, a tapered hood distal attachment cap was used to carefully separate the stent and the sponge from the mucosa. Subsequently, the stent was removed with the grasping forceps. The defect had become smaller, infectious parameters decreased, and the patient was clinically stable. However, the suspicion on a persisting defect remained due to some air bubbles, and it was decided to place another effect stent. Upon removal after one week, after a total of two weeks with the VEX stent, the defect appeared to be closed. This was confirmed by a CT scan with oral contrast. Three days after removal of the vextent, and after two and a half months of hospitalization, the patient was discharged. At three months follow-up, the patient was doing well, had normal intake, and there were no signs of stenosis. In conclusion, endoscopic vacuum therapy is a paradigm-shifting, organ-sparing treatment for upper gastrointestinal defects. The Vextent offers a novel treatment option combining the benefits of the stent and sponge where the stent seals the defect and allows for oral intake and the sponge prevents dislocation and provides the benefits of negative pressure wound therapy.